My name is Adam Leonard, and I am here today to review A Plague Tale Requiem. It is the second game in the Plague Tale franchise, and it sees the return of series protagonist Amicia, her young, supernaturally charged brother Hugo, and an absolute f ton of rats. Let's see how A Plague Tale Requiem lives up to its lofty ambitions in this spectacular sequel. deserve this. I'm sorry, Amicia. His mind is extinguished. What have they done? It's the macula. When I played the original Plague Tale, A Plague Tale Innocence, on my PlayStation 4, I had a lot of respect for what this game was going for and what Asobo Studios was trying to achieve. They were really reaching for a triple A experience. The game felt very familiar to people who played uh, Naughty Dog games. It felt very much like it was in that vein of high caliber storytelling. Really huge ideas, but they were kind of buckling under the weight of their own ambitions. They couldn't quite meet up to that challenge. Uh, it was a little game that wanted to be a big game. Well, I am very excited to say that A Plague Tale Requiem, the follow-up, is a big game that wants to be an even bigger game. And there are some shortcomings that this game has, but for the most part, Asobo Studios has really knocked it out of the park, delivering a much more polished, refined, and fleshed-out experience in a game that continues to punch above its weight, but it really achieves what it's going for, and I felt like this was just a masterful follow-up to the original game. I enjoyed it tremendously. Plague Tale Requiem wants to be a lot of different things, that sometimes it feels like it is a family melodrama. It's a period piece uh, where you're going through medieval France amidst the plague, uh, but it's very supernatural, and there are a lot of horror elements in this game. There is a lot going on in this franchise, and I feel that now that they've kind of gotten the burden of setting the tone in the original game, this game has a lot more room to breathe. But there aren't a lot of surprises thematically, it just expands on the world that you already know, and I think that suits Plague Tale Requiem very well. Plague Tale Requiem really takes the foundation of the original game and builds upon it. And they spent a lot of time in this game establishing what the affliction that Hugo has is all about. He has this sort of demonic infection in his blood where he is able to summon this horde of rats whenever he gets agitated or scared or angry. And boy, there's a lot of anger in this game. This deals a lot with trauma and how people react and and, and punch back at the world that is trying so desperately to take everything away from them. It's a very heartbreaking game. There are horror elements, but unlike a lot of other horror games, they really take the time to kind of reflect on how it is impacting the characters after the fallout of all this death. Hugo calls these rats forward almost as, as a security blanket to protect him. They just leave immense destruction in their wake and just kill scores of people and cause the world around them really to fall into ruin. And so there's a lot of emotion there. Amicia is trying to shelter her younger brother from all of these things that he is responsible for. Plague Tale Requiem is a visually stunning game and while it only performs at 30 frames per second and that is going to be a turn off to a lot of people, especially playing on these modern consoles, I'm reviewing this on the PS5. The set design, the environmental design, and the character design is just outstanding. Asobo Studios really has some incredible artists at work. And while the storyline is very commendable and the acting and the writing is fantastic, the production as a whole is just is really polished well in this game. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. This is primarily a stealth-based game. Uh, Misia is a young 15-year-old girl armed pretty much with just a slingshot for the most part. Uh, at, there are guards patrolling all over the place that want to capture you for various reasons. There are very ill-intentioned humans in this world, so you're not just contending against the unstoppable rat horde. There are some really bad dudes in this game that want to kill you or take advantage of you or capture you. And for the most part, you have to stay in the shadows. 
but you can't stay in the shadows because that's where the rats are. So this game has a very interesting stealth dynamic where you have to hide from the humans who are coming after you, but a lot of times you are surrounded by these rat hordes and the only way to survive against the rats is to stay in the light. So you're hiding while trying to stay visible in the light. It's an interesting dynamic and you have to balance back and forth the, the threats and the dangers and you're threading the needle as you make your way through these levels trying to just stay alive against impossible odds. There are lots of skills and tricks and different devices that you can, can craft in this world to help you along the way. Smoke bombs, uh, flare bombs that you all shoot out of your slingshot both as weapons and as deterrents against the rats. There are a lot of things at play here and sometimes that can kind of get challenging as an older gamer where I have to remember a lot of button combinations in this game to craft different ammunition or to equip different weapons. There's a lot of gameplay hooks and at times it feels like there's a little bit too much. Uh, sometimes the game will introduce uh, an option or a skill in the game but it isn't necessary and it isn't utilized very often and then a couple of hours later you'll have to use that exact thing to survive and it, you know, like I said, as an older guy, I kind of forget about all of the things at play here. So I found it a little challenging and perhaps a little overbearing. I would have preferred a little bit more simplified approach to the combat and the evasion in this game. It might just be the cobwebs, so your experience and your mileage may vary. One thing that we discuss in all of our reviews at Mega Dads is the family focus. There are some games that are appropriate to play with your kids. A Plague Tale Requiem is definitely not one of them. This is a horror game, again, through and through. You're constantly going to be inundated with blood and death, people being eaten alive or burned alive, and the trauma that comes from that. Your main protagonist, Amicia, is forced to kill. There are a lot of heavy themes mostly surrounding death and dying in this game. So I would steer clear of this game with your little ones. Make sure you're playing it after bedtime. A Plague Tale Requiem is a dark game. In the end, boy oh boy was I impressed with the Plague Tale Requiem. As a person who loves storytelling in video games, this game is really in a class of its own fantastic, superb characters and acting and presentation. And the music is breathtaking. Uh, and I'm very impressed that a Sobo studio is able to meet the match, the technical, uh, the technical side of game development with the lofty ambitions that they clearly have for this franchise. There's a lot of love here. And those things finally met in the middle to provide a much more level experience. I'm giving a Plague Tale Requiem four and a half out of five stars. Go to hell! So that you can save your brother. I'll make you tell us where Hugo is. Blessed be the child! Blessed be the mother! Honor! Oh, no. Leave it to me! Kill the girl! Thanks for watching this review here on Mega Dads. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, find all sorts of Mega Dads content over at megadads.org. This is where gamer life meets real life. We'll see you guys next time.